everyone. I'm Joy with EO Global Learning. Thank you all for joining today. If you have any questions, remember to type them in the Q&A tab, and we'll, and we'll address them throughout the presentation. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Matt Stewart, the co-founder and co-CEO of National Services Group and former EO Global Chairman. Matt's passionate stories offer insight into navigating through the avoidable challenges encountered by most in business. Matt helps to build multiple businesses built on delivering a world-class customer and employee experience. As chairman of the Global Board for EO, Matt traveled the world meeting with thought leaders, spoke about business theory, the pathways to success, and helped his peers to learn and grow. He was instrumental in the creation of the EO Insignia Quantum Leap Program and has devoted much of his time in EO to build systems and tools that will enable quantum leap growth for businesses. In addition to running a business, a family, coaching, and engaging other entrepreneurs, Matt is adding author to his growing list. Matt will release his first book entitled Cookies Crumble, Seven Lessons That Will Prevent You From Ever Experiencing a Recession Again, um, coming out this fall. Without further ado, I welcome Matt Stewart. Uh, before we get started, I want to make sure everyone has the materials they need to ensure we can flow through this process as quickly as we need to today. This is a two-and-a-half-hour webinar, and I had a choice to do just part of my, sorry, two and a half hour workshop, and I had a choice to do part of the workshop or all of the workshop very quickly. And my thought was we would do it very quickly, and to get that done, you need to have some material in front of you that you can draw from as I'm speaking. I will take some pauses during the course of this webinar to give you a chance to write out some of your thoughts, but more importantly than that, it's important that you set aside some time within the next 24 hours to sit down and finish our work today. So what I ask that you do is open up your calendar, and sometime between now and this time tomorrow, if you could block off between 30 minutes and an hour to sit down and continue your work on your goals. We all know that if we don't put it in our calendar right now, it probably won't get done. So we won't get everything done today, and that's fine. It's important that you make some time to finish tomorrow. It's also important that you have your materials in front of you because when we're going through the worksheet, you'll need to pull off the material that you worked on prior to coming to our webinar today. So a, a wheel of life, the pages that back up the wheel, those are the things that you're going to be drawing from. And the Me Tool, which I'll show you in a second, is what you will be either typing onto or writing onto. And you need a separate screen if you're typing onto uh, the form directly in its electronic form. So here's an example of a wheel of life. You should have this filled out right now. Most people in EO have seen this before, and most of you understand that it's not going to come out perfectly round uh, usually. So rarely do we see someone that's hitting all sevens in all eight categories, and rarely do we see someone that's hitting one or zero in all eight categories. So this example I'm showing on the screen is a typical EO member's wheel of life, where they're doing pretty well with fitness and health. They're doing okay with their spouse and their family and their career, but maybe they don't feel very good about their adventure fun and their wealth and their spirituality. Some of you may have uh, highs and lows in different areas, but it's okay that your wheel looks a little bit broken. That's very typical. From this sheet, you should have been able to make some commitments that we are going to draw on today. So when we're looking at the Me Tool and talking about relationships, you might be drawing from the family area, the relationships area, the significant other area, the spirituality area as an example. You should also have your visions written out. And I gave you all a lot of homework. I do a lot of life coaching as a hobby, and we typically begin with uh, vision and values and then later get into some of this long-term goal setting we're doing today. It doesn't matter what order you go in, but I thought it was a good idea for you to at least think of your, your vision statements in these five areas prior to coming today. And some of the homework was to get you in the mindset of working with us today on this webinar. Today we're going to be using the Living Legacy Me tool. This comes from uh, the Gazelles organization. And uh, when we came up with the Inject Insignia and Quantum Leap, we had 83 RFPs go out and quite a few fantastic proposals come in. We selected gazelles. Uh, they were giving us a great deal, and they had some great ideas. Uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how we came up with the Me Pillar, 
But this blank sheet is really by design. Uh, they wanted it to be you know, basically a blank slate to draw from. However, there are some guidance, there is some guidance embedded, and I want to explain it to you very quickly. First of all, I'd like you to go to the top of the page and where it says your where it says name, please write your name or type your name. And date, please write today's date. And it's the twenty fourth. Living legacy, we will talk about that very quickly in a few moments. We'll fill that out later. And where it says date, I'm going to also ask you to pick a date in the future uh, 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 which you are striving to achieve your goals by. And I'm going to talk about that in one second. A lot of people are confused by the five F words on the far left. Those words do not correspond with the rows next to them by any means. They're just reminders. Finance, fitness, friends, family, and faith are five areas that you can think about when you're starting to think about setting goals in any of the boxes to the right. So as an example, faith does not relate to 10 to 25-year goals only. It may relate to every box on there or none of them, depending on who you are and what you believe. Finance does not only relate to stops, except for in my case, I need to stop wasting my money. Um, it relates to all different areas. So the five Fs on the left are reminders that you can look at if you get stuck as we're moving through. The very bottom of the page, 90-day action plans. We're going to build from top to bottom. The 90-day action plans on the bottom should lead you to one-year accomplishments or activities, which should lead you to 10 to 25-year aspirations. And I, I think of it sort of strategic goals on the top and tactical goals on the bottom two-thirds. So as we go through the program today, you're going to be picking some goals, some, some achievements you want, some, some things you want to accomplish 10 to 25 years from now, and you're going to have to start and stop doing things in the next 90 days to help get yourself there, as well as have a metric a year from now that shows that you're on the right path. So that's how the sheet flows. If you have any questions about that, you can go to the top of your page to the Q&A tab and send a question, and I will answer it in a few moments. That's how, the, that's how the sheet flows. What I'd like you to do right now is think about not the range 10 to 25 years from now, but an actual deadline. So as an example, my deadline is by the time I'm 60. So on the top of my sheet, I've written by the time I'm 60. Because 10 to 25 years is ambiguous, and 10 to 25 years is hard to set goals around. So it's not a range. It's an actual destination time and point in time you want to pick. So I'm 41. I chose 60. I, I did this presentation for some of my team. They're in their 20s. I suggested they pick 35 or 40. So you can pick a time in the future, sometimes 10 to 25 years out, and make that your deadline. And we will work on this sheet throughout today's hour. The entire, my slides froze, so if you could move to the next slide. The entire program today is built on forum principles. And next slide, please, slide 13. It's built on the forum principles of experience sharing, asking the right questions, and holding each other accountable. So if you have a friend that's on this call with us today, I ask that you make them your buddy. You'll see me reference buddies later on in the conversation. I'd like you to go ahead and text them right now and let them know you're going to be my me accountability buddy. If you don't have someone on this call that can help hold you accountable, we're recording the call and you can select someone later. But we have found through Insignia and Quantum Leap that having a buddy is very helpful and if you can check in with that buddy every 30 days or so on your progress, you're much more likely to achieve your goals. However, having said that, just by filling this out today, I think you'll make great strides towards achieving your goals. And this program is based on giving people tools. You can't change the way people think. All you can do is give them the tools, the use of which will change their thinking. Our tools started 
in a think tank in San Francisco during a GLC years ago, and we decided we needed to offer something in EO to members that had been around a long time and had been there, done that, and members that had different business challenges than the average EO member. And we went around and tried to figure out what can we offer to EO that will be special? What areas do we need help in? And we decided we needed to put together some programs that revolved around people, strategy, execution, finance, and me. And out of the 83 people we requested proposals from, just about all 83 had worked in the area of people, strategy, execution, and finance. That was common. Everybody knew about that. Lots of tools around finding the right people, how to hire. Lots of tools around building strategic plans and executing on them. Lots of tools around finance but nobody had thought about the entrepreneur themselves. And it was very interesting that we decided as a, as a think tank when we were coming up with Insignia and Quantum Leap that we needed to give something to the entrepreneurs who were off taking care of the world but maybe not taking care of themselves. And as we went around to find some help building the tools, we found that no one had really thought about that. Well, my journey to help myself started in a forum meeting in Dove Canyon Country Club years ago when a person named Pat Redfern got up, he was hosting our forum event, and he had decided that that forum event, instead of going through the typical presentations and the typical update, everyone in our forum would have 30 minutes to explain their business and themselves. So we got up and we brought our financials and we brought our org charts and we explained our companies, and Pat did something different. He put this slide up on the wall as the first thing he talked about, and he explained to our group that his life fit into three categories, the personal side, the family side, and the business side. And I sat there listening to Pat having an epiphany. He didn't know what he was doing to me that day, but it was one of those magical forum moments where the presenter has no idea how they're touching the audience because my pie chart, and I had thought about it many times, had two halves. It had a family side and a business side, and there was no personal side because a couple years prior to seeing Pat's presentation, I had my first son, Jake, my only son, my first child, Jake, and I had decided I was going to be the greatest father of all time. And I knew I had to work and, and become a better business person, so I split my life into two. And I was hanging out with my kid and hanging out with my wife and at home after work and just devoted to my family, as well as devoted to my business. I was also 240 pounds. I just purchased my first pair of size 40-inch waist shorts. I was moving from 38 to 40. I was smoking cigarettes, and I was a mess. I wasn't making time to work out. I wasn't hanging out with my friends. I had no personal side. So Pat shared this slide with me, and I said to Pat, I said, man, I think you just changed my life, which he did. Funny thing is, Dr. Barry Grice out of, out of Boston found the same thing. He interviewed, I believe, 500,000 CEOs and entrepreneurs around the world over the course of a long research study. And what he found is most entrepreneurs and CEOs dump everything they have into work. And at the end of their 8, 10, 12-hour day, at the end of their long week of travel, they come home and they give what's left over to their family, usually to their kids, trying to see how this day at school went, trying to see how, how it was hanging out with their friends. And then what's left over, the last little scraps went to their spouse, and then nothing left over for themselves. And the funny thing is, the kids didn't want their parents bugging into their day, and the spouse did. So they had reversed the family order, Dr. Barry Grice found, and they weren't taking care of themselves. And what he found through his studies is that if an entrepreneur or CEO thinks about taking care of themselves, they will present better to their family and to their work. And so that's what today's uh, module is built on. It's built on how you want to live your life and what your legacy is going to be. And it breaks it down into relationships, achievements, rituals, not abilities. It says abilities here. Wealth, and the tool we're going to use is the sheet I showed you. So as you look at the sheet, I want to warn you. Don't worry if you're having a hard time filling it out. I'm going to move very fast, 
And most of you are going to think, he's moving too fast. Why can't he slow down? I'm not going to put you through a two-hour webinar and pause for five minutes while you're looking at your computer screens because I know you're going to check your email. We're going to move fast. You need to set aside time within the next 24 hours to finish what you're doing. And many people, when they go through this exercise, are unable to fill out this sheet. Now, some of you on the call know I had a derogatory experience in 2007 with my personal finances and my business finances. I began the, I began the attempt of setting goals in 2008. It took me a year to put anything on the sheet. I remember the Canadian conference during Peter Thomas's speech. It all of a sudden hit me, and I filled up the whole sheet nine months after I started trying to set my goal. So if you're in a rough time personally, if you just bankrupted your family and your business like I did in 2007, not a good time to set goals. If you're having a kid tomorrow, not a good time to set goals. So if you find yourself uh, unable to fill something out, set it aside for six months. This process is not meant to stress you out. It's meant to help you relieve stress. Planning is a way to relieve stress and free your mind we don't want you to start worrying about planning. At the same time, if you find that you're filling out every box with 57 things, you're overdoing it. When you type your sheet up later on in the next 24 hours when you type it into your computer, we've set the, the sheet to only allow you to type in maybe five things per box. And the reason for that is we don't want you to have too many things and set yourself up for failure. A human can only focus on four to seven things at any one time. So we're going to have you limit what you put on your sheet. And if you're having a hard time with it, don't worry about it. Do look at your wheel of life that you brought with you today. Look at those commitments and those vision pages. Look at other goals and draw from that. This is the real world. You can bring all your paperwork in. There's no proctor watching you. There's no cheating. You can use every resource you have. And do limit what you put on the tool and think about that one thing. Again, if you haven't done it already, name on top, today's date. Pick a time within the next 24 hours to keep working on the sheet and pick a deadline for your long-term goal. So if you're in your 40s, maybe you pick 50, 60. Maybe you pick a special birthday, a special anniversary. Pick something that you're going to remember in the next 20, 10 to 25 years that the top half of your sheet will focus on. I'm going to skip that. Uh, we've already showed you a blank wheel of life. We've already showed you uh, what a wheel of life filled out should look like. You should have both those in front of you. You should have this in front of you. And I thought I would just show you what my wheel of life looks like. My wife and I, every six months as a ritual, which we'll talk about later, every February and August, so I don't forget, have a spousal retreat. And we fill out a wheel of life, and I compare my wheel to Jill's, Jill's wheel. And as you see on the, around my dark circle, there's little lines. Those lines are where Jill measured herself. So we compare my wheel to her wheel, and it turns out that typically she's beating me in four areas and I'm beating her in four areas, and we create fantastic conversation around the wheel of life. On the outside, you'll see some of my commitments, which I then transfer to my me tool. There's an example of Jill's. She uses color marker, which I didn't scan it that way. And you can see the lines showing where I came in. So that's the material we're going to cover. We're going to dive right into the top of the page, the line that says Living Legacy. And I'm going to start by letting you watch Vern Harnish, who helped create these tools, explain the Living Legacy. So it's time to show this video. Welcome members of EO Injected. I am Vern Harnish, founder and CEO of Gazelles. Buckminster Fuller, the great inventor, has said, you cannot change the way people think. All you can do is give them tools, the use of which will change their thinking. We have provided you four one-page tools built around people, strategy, execution, and cash that our hope is will drive positive, continuous change in your business. It's this fifth tool that we have titled Simply Self whose goal is to drive continuous positive change in you. Dr. Barry Greif, the psychiatrist of Harvard Business School and the long-standing faculty member of MIT EO's Executive Leadership Program, has often pointed out the trade-offs that entrepreneurs must make between our business, family, and self. 
and that we particularly will focus on business at the expense of the family and self to the point where the self can actually build an animosity towards the company. That's exactly why we designed this tool and to give you a chance to build your living legacy. Now, I want to emphasize the importance of the term living legacy. I recently asked Dr. Barry Greif why there were no other books besides his that actually focused on this term legacy and he, he just laughed and he said when you think about it, legacy is that which you consider you know, just before you're dying to think about death and that's not really a topic most of us want to visit. And so he emphasized the importance of focusing on your living legacy. It's, it's this wake that you're leaving right now as you sail through life. It's the relationships you nurture. It's the achievements that you're able to accomplish. It's the abilities that you're going to focus on and hone. And it's the wealth that you are creating and sharing. That is your living legacy. And the first video has concluded. All right, thank you very much. If for some reason you were unable to see that video, all videos are available on the eonetwork.org website. You can also go up to your Q&A tab and let Joy know if you're having problems viewing the video. If you have any questions based on the material we're going to be using thus far, you can put that in the Q&A tab. I'm going to move forward. Uh, what I heard Vern say is basically, Think about your legacy and start living it now. Don't wait until you're dead for people to think about who you were. Think about it now and start living it now. So last night I went to sushi with my son and my daughter and my wife. And at the end of sushi, I shook the hand of the new busboy and thanked him very much because he had done a great job that night. I bowed to our sushi chef, who we know very well, said thank you to the other guys and walked out the door and got in the car with my son. My son said, Dad, why are you always nice to everybody? And I said, Jake, you know, I'm nice to everybody because there's a wake that follows you, just like the wake of a boat, and I pay attention to my wake. And when I was a kid, I was a busboy, and I lived that life, and I try to be nice to the people that nobody else is nice to. Everybody is nice to the CEOs in the world, but nobody is nice to the busboys. And as I'm going through pre preparing for this call today, I realized I was living my legacy and my son noticed. So my living legacy that I have written on my sheet is selfless regard. So what I ask that you do is at least try to come up with something in writing that captures your living legacy. Two to three words. I don't expect you to be able to do it. This is the hardest part of the whole exercise. So remember, in the next 24 hours, you're supposed to have an hour set aside to finish the sheet, and your brain is now working on what will your living legacy be. If you can't come up with one to two words right away, take the next 30 seconds to brainstorm and come up with the words that describe what you want your living legacy to be. I'm going to take a 30-second pause and let you fill out that top section of the sheet. So the 30 seconds are up. I shared my example of selfless regard, which to me means I want to move through life selflessly, where I'm not concerned about you know, what I get in return for things. And I'd like to pay attention and give regard to everyone and everything around me, regardless of people noticing or not noticing. I'm going to move on to the next. Hopefully that helps you come up with something. Uh, typically I'd have you all sharing. I want to see if there are any questions yet. Joy, are there any questions? Um, yes, Matt, we have two. The first one is, can you explain the living legacy field on the sheet? Um, and then the second one is a living legacy similar to your strongest core value. Um, living legacy field on the sheet is the top right. It's just one line, and you put it down there. Um, it's going to jive with you or it's not going to jive with you. What I find is, when people start thinking about it, and I've done this workshop for, thousand, for over a thousand people. I've done it one-on-one. -on -one. I've done it with groups. 
I do life coaching as a hobby for free for people. Uh, I don't need any clients. Uh, and when we start thinking about this, people start talking about it, and it starts to become top of mind. We want you to limit it to just a few words, not a paragraph, like a vision statement or a mission statement or personal values might be. And, yes, uh, regard is one of my core values, so I drew that. Contribution is one of my core values, so I drew from that. So, yes, your values and your mission and your vision should flow right into what you want your legacy to be as you live your life. Any more questions, Joy? You All are right, good. We're going to start in the middle of the sheet or, the, or towards the right of the sheet in the rituals column. And I'm going to explain to you the rituals. This is the toughest part of the sheet. And I'm going to let Tony Schwartz talk about it in one second in a video. But basically, I'm starting with the rituals because the rituals really aren't always goals. The rituals are the things you're going to do to create success. And I want you to think about something before I put Tony up. You brushed your teeth this morning. Think about brushing your teeth this morning. Do you start in the top right back or do you start in the front do you do the top row of teeth and then the bottom row of teeth or do you do what i do do the back right top uh, bottom right top right bottom left top left front then think about your shower this morning do you wash your hair first then condition then wash your body or do you do do you wash your hair then wash your face rinse your head put your conditioner in so it sits for two minutes wash your body then shave and rinse. When you got dressed this morning, do you sit on the ground and put your socks and pants on before you put your shirt on, or do you dress top to bottom? Because if you think about it, every day you probably brush your teeth the same way, shower the same way, and dress the same way. And you know if you don't shower the same way, you forget if you wash your hair or not, and you end up washing your hair two or three times. Those are rituals, and your brain does, goes into automatic pilot when you're doing those things. So some of the items that we're going to talk about today are rituals that will lead you to success in other areas. I'll share some examples with you. So we are what we repeatedly do, and excellence is a habit. So what I've done with my life, and I, I look back, I look at where I am now compared to where I thought I would be when I was 20, and part of me is disappointed. So I've turned my spontaneity into rituals, and I've turned my crazy side into a controlled side, and I'm quite disappointed in what a complete dork I've become over the last 20 years. But that was the price I paid to be a successful husband, family man, businessman, community, uh, involved community leader. I don't have enough time to screw around. I don't have enough time to forget things. I want to live a long time, so I need to be healthy. So I've created some rituals around my life after reading Tony Schwartz's book and after talking to some friends and reading other books that have helped me. So I want you to pull out your wheel of life and your commitments and start thinking about some of the rituals you need to form in your life to either hit some of your goals or maybe you'll have some of those rituals become goals. Maybe you want a ritual of working out every day for the rest of your life and you need to write that on the top of your rituals column. Maybe you want to have a ritual for the rest of your life of, of managing your money in a certain way. Maybe you want to have a ritual for the rest of your life of always having family dinners. Those will lead to achievements in the other columns. If you have a ritual of having family dinners, it's going to improve your relationships. And a ritual of managing your money on a monthly or weekly basis, it's going to improve uh, your wealth. So... Start looking at your rituals column while I'm talking. Feel free to interrupt me and start writing. And think about where do you want to be in that 10 to 25 year from now range, whatever that point on the wall you've selected. What rituals do you want to have? And what do you need to start and stop doing right now to lead to a, a year-long activity or achievement that will lead to those rituals in the long run? Like I said, the rituals is the only column that really spills into the other column. That's why I'm starting by it. I didn't mention that your one-year goals, we make it simple, and it's almost a ritual. Uh, we make it a calendar year. So I have a ritual of resetting this page every calendar year on January 1st. I review it every quarter. 
I will remember the calendar quarters. So all the goals are going to revolve around calendar quarters and the 90-day start and stop, one-year activity on the calendar year, and then you've picked your deadline. Think about what rituals you need to cultivate, what you need to stop doing. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to write out some rituals, and then I will share some of mine that might give you some ideas. 30 seconds starts now. Okay, your 30 minutes is up. Um, I'm going to share some of my rituals, and you can keep writing. I want to stop eating badly more than one day a week. And that's on the bottom of my column, because at the top of my column, I'd like to be at the best shape I've ever been. Now, that's not really a ritual, but my rituals will create that. I want to start taking Spanish three times a week as a ritual, or not taking it, but studying my Rosetta Stone, because I have an achievement by the time I'm 60 of being fluent in Spanish. I want to start stretching daily, working out daily, tracking my food daily, again, to help me achieve some of my health goals. Some of my top, top column goals, I, I want to have rituals that keep me heart and mind healthy. I want to be 20 years younger than my natural age by the time I'm 60. And I want to maintain a yearly retreat with my wife, Jill, where we review some of these rituals. And that, that support that we talk about in Who's Got Your Back is absolutely critical. Now, the, what I really find about that kind of support is that it should be a practice ground for all of us to learn how to be the kind of people that we take out to the rest of the world, that we bring into our corporations, that we take out to our clients, that we, frankly, bring back to our families. And many of the EO members that I find, they they practice within their EO forums these kind of principles, but they, they don't gain the courage to have this kind of candor back in their, in their companies and have this kind of mutual support and this kind of loyalty and this kind of connectivity. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I want every one of you to think about the following question. Who are the most important individuals to the success of you and your business? And, and let's put an audacious number out there. Let's say that there are 250 people that are the most important people to the success of your business and, your, and whatever your dreams are, however you want to define it. And if you think about that 250 people, they probably come from a broad range of constituencies. Of course, they're going to be some of your key employees, right? And of those 250 people, some of your key customers, some of your prospects, maybe outside influencers, maybe, maybe the media. Um, Maybe those lifeline relationships that you have that really prop you up and hold you up and keep you going and give you that kind of encouragement. They could be analysts. They could be any number of types of individuals. But we're asking this question now of great companies like General Electric and Microsoft and others and Accenture and really asking them to think about this from a marketing perspective and from a strategic perspective and then acting on it. The first thing you need to do to act on it is prioritize, because you can't treat all 250 people in the same way. So you want to prioritize who are that, who's that core 20 individuals? We call them double A priorities. These are the folks that are on your speed dial. These are folks you wake up every morning thinking about, you're connecting with constantly. And then who are the next 30? Those are your A priorities. So that makes up your first 50. And then the next 100, which is your B's, and then the next 100, with, which are your C's. And you're only going to be able to apply a certain level of outreach to the A's, to the B's, to the C's relative to the criticality and importance to you achieving your goals, your dreams, your success. You got it? My, my relationship and my life centers around the three people that you should see on your screen. There they are. Uh, my son, Jake, on the left, my daughter, Kennedy, and my wife, who some of you know, Jill in the middle. Pretty much everything in my life has to do with them. But, you know, Brandon, who just texted me, you know, Brandon is an EO buddy of mine who I, who's in my forum and I spend some time with. My relationship with Brandon actually helps my children. The, brand, the support that Brandon has given me 
has helped my children. And those are some of the things you think about as you think about your relationships. Now, what, what Keith talks about that I thought was very strange but also very interesting, he said that if you think about it, you probably have at least 250 friends. And if you think about those friends, some of them are taking up more time than they should in your life, and some of them aren't getting enough. There was a guy that used to always want to come out and have a drink with me and hang out once a week, and I found I was spending you know, an hour a week, two hours a week with this guy, but I wasn't hanging out with Brandon Ames or talking to him on the phone for two hours a week, and Brandon was helping me and I was helping Brandon, but this guy Mark, we weren't really going anywhere. And what Keith Ferrazzi suggested was you sit down, and you, and, you, and you actually rank your friends, 20 double A's, 30 A's, 100 B's, and 100 C's. And I thought that was very strange, but the purpose for it was so you could start to think about where you invest your time. Now, I'm not suggesting that you come up with your 20 double A's, 30 A's, 100 B's, 100 C's, but I am suggesting that in your relationship column, you think about how you want to spend your time. You can draw from your Wheel of Life sheet. You can draw from your commitment sheet. But start writing down what you need to stop doing to better your relationships. So as an example for me, I need to stop yelling at my kids. Some things that you need to start doing. I need to start having date night with my wife once a week. I have date nights with my EO buddies, but not my wife. I need to start having retreats with my wife and with my children one-on-one. -on -one. I have them with my forum. I have them with my chapter. I have them with my business partners, but I don't have them with my kids. So if you don't have retreats with your business partners, maybe you're going to start doing that. Well, what this sheet has done for me is give me the opportunity to manage my relationships better so I'm not leaving someone behind. And unfortunately for me, it seems like my wife and my kids sometimes get left behind and my partners and my EO buddies move to the front of the list. So I had to start and stop doing things to balance that out. And then I have a yearly goal of family one-on-one -on -one retreats with my children. I, I do one with each kid and one with my wife. And I have a long-term goal by the time I'm 60 to still be happily married to my wife and to have no regrets with my family and to manage my 250 friends better. So I'm going to pause for 30 seconds so you can draw from your wheel of life and your commitments and write some things down. 30 seconds starts now. I'm changing the slides to help you get some ideas. It's 15 more seconds. Now, I know that you need more time, so again, I want to remind you that if you sat through two and a half hours of me blabbing over the, over the computer, you would go crazy. So instead of abbreviating this and only doing two columns and letting you figure out the other ones on your own, we decided to just rush through all four columns. And remember, you should have some time set aside in the next 24 hours to finish this. At the end of the slide, you'll get my email. If you need some help, um, you can email me, and I'll get back to you sometime before Sunday. Uh, but we're going to move on, and I know that that's difficult, and we're going to start talking about the achievements. Now, again, where do you want to be in 10 to 25 years? Is it a financial goal, and you want to have a jet plane? Is it a security goal, and you want to have the money that you need? Is it a time management goal and you want to spend your time in the countries you want to spend it in and the people you want to spend it with? But John Asaroff filmed a video for us, and he, he wrote the book that became the movie The Secret, and he wrote the book that you see on the screen, The Answer. Hi, and welcome EO Injected members. My name is John Asaroff, and you may remember me from the hit movie and book The Secret. 
or one of my New York Times best-selling books, including my latest, The Answer, Grow Any Business, Achieve Financial Freedom, and Live an Extraordinary Life. Now, I'd like to share with you some ideas around your personal achievements, ideas around goal setting and visualizing your way to having, being, and doing absolutely everything you choose and want in your life. Well, number one, I want to ask you to ask yourself a question. What do you really want to achieve in your personal life? What kind of physique, health, vitality, and energy do you really want to have? What kind of relationship do you want to have with your significant other, your family, your friends, maybe your children? What kind of charitable constitutions or institutions do you want to participate in? What kind of legacy do you want to leave? What kind of values do you want to live right now? Because, you see, the more clear you are about exactly what it is you want to achieve in your personal life, the faster your brain starts to find in the physical world things to match up with that perfect image of those personal goals that you have and the personal achievements that you are capable of achieving just like you've achieved the success in your business. His point is, is that when you have clarity of what your goals are, your brain moves faster to find the thing that makes that up. So I want you to think about that as you start thinking about your achievements. And think about the power of creating a vision. And if you want to have a goal of building a vision board, you can research it online and put that in the start column. If you want to have a goal about laying out your personal vision, you can put that in your start column. There's a book that you can read written by Marcus Buckingham who talks about not worrying about your weaknesses and improving your weaknesses, but leveraging your strengths to get your achievements. So I want you to fill out the achievement column as your ideas flow and think about where do you want to be in 10 to 25 years, and I'll give you some ideas. I'd like to have a foundation, a charitable foundation, that's funded to seven figures. I'd like to be a top-selling author. So I had to, on the bottom section, write in there, start writing my book. I had to, in the middle section, write in there that I needed to have my first draft done within a year. I had to then find a ghostwriter to rewrite my book because it was such a piece of crap. And so I have a new goal by 2013 to be done with the new version. So therefore, I can get to that top achievement. With the seven-figure foundation, I had to start putting money into a foundation and set up a foundation. On the bottom, I had to stop watching TV if I didn't read and study Spanish that day because, like I said before, one of my top achievements by the time I'm 60 is to be fluent in Spanish. So I've given you some ideas. I'd like to give you 30 seconds to write out some of your achievements, some of the things you want to start and stop doing, some of the uh, metrics within a year, and where you want to be in 10 to 25 years. And I've changed the slide, which might help you. If you're not using your wheel of life and the commitments and vision sheets, you can use that to draw from. And again, I know you need more time. You have time in the next 24 hours already in your calendar to finish working on this. You may want to text your buddy again and and let them know when that time is and see if they want to get on the phone with you. But we're going to move to wealth and what your relationship with money is. Now, this is a tough column. It's the easiest column to set goals in. Everybody's got a number. I want to have $10 million by the time I'm 60 because I know I'll get 10% interest a year and I need a million dollars to live off of. That was the goal before the recession. So now everybody's number is $20 million because they think they're going to get 5%. But it's easy. You, you probably already have your financial number. There may already be some things that you're starting doing, having a, a monthly budget meeting, having a financial plan. That's not the sales guy's financial plan. I'm going to make 12 times my best month, and I'm going to build my financial plan off of that, but the entrepreneur's financial plan. 
I could make X, Y, or Z this year. My business could profit a lot, profit medium, profit very little. I might have to cut my salary, raise my salary. I get bonuses I don't. So maybe you need to start building financial plans based on ABC financial results. Maybe you need to stop spending money in a certain way, but usually the wealth is pretty simple. Those of you that have seen Robert Kiyosaki, he's got an interesting way of looking at it. He's the guy that made those wallets back in the day that we saw when we were kids that had ACDC and Pink Floyd, the Velcro wallets with the band on them. And he paid the bands 20% for those wallets. He kept 80% for the production, sales, distribution, everything. And it, it hit him one day, I'm on the wrong side of this equation. Those guys aren't doing anything but giving me their logo, and I'm doing all the work. So he started the Rich Dad, Poor Dad concept and the books all over the world in many different languages. He doesn't write the book. He licensed it out. He doesn't make the game. He licenses it out. He figured out a way to get out of the rat race to make it so your salary is not something you're a prisoner to. I personally have to work in my company, and I love working in my company, but I can't get the same amount of money I make in a different job. And if I got bored in my business, I'm a prisoner here because I have a mortgage and I have payments and I don't have enough money saved up to cover my cost of living. Last night in the car on the way to sushi, my son and I were talking about the, the strip mall that the sushi bar is in and how the rent has gone up by double due to the anchor tenant Whole Foods. And we were talking about how great it is to be a landlord, and our friend J.C., who has 40 Ferraris, and he doesn't do anything because he's a landlord, and people just keep paying him and paying him and paying him for the building he already owns outright. So that's a concept that uh, Robert Kiyosaki talks about, getting out of the rat race, lowering your cost of living, increasing your passive income, some ideas there. But it's not all about getting rich and having money. We started with Keith Ferrazzi and the mutual, mutually beneficial, supportive relationships. We started with me talking about my selfless regard. Money is like water. It flows through everything. For some, it flows like a river. For others, a trickle. It belongs to all. It is a carrier. And that's the message I took from Lynn Twist, whose video we're not going to show either. But I think about wealth in terms of happiness, in terms of security, and in terms of financial wealth. And I'm going to pause for 30 seconds and let you think about what you want to write into your column. You can draw on your wheel of life again. You can draw on, on your commitments page and think about what you're going to do to prevent the blockage and the stress that I went through in 2007 through 2010. You can think about your number and you can think about if you need to stop or start doing anything, and then we'll wrap up the day. So 30 seconds starts now. Okay, Joy, before I move into the just the follow-up material, I want to see if there's any more questions that we missed along the way. Um, no, we are good for now. We're good on questions. Okay, I'll share some of my goals on wealth so uh, I can help you prime the pump there. I want to buy 50, have no debt outside of tax shelters. I have my number written down on the top half of my sheet. I'd like to have a ski house by 50. I'd like to have my retirement fully funded by 50. So those are my long-term goals. My overall page is by 60, but I can't take the stress of money anymore. So I need to just get it out of my life by the time I'm 50. I need to stop, and this is going to sound strange, I need to stop giving so much money to charity because I, for years, funded charities and did not fund my personal retirement uh, when I was going through some tough times. I need to stop traveling as much, which is a dream that is fleeting me, uh, thanks to EO. 
and I need to stop eating out at restaurants so much. My wife and I eat at restaurants all the time. I need to start tracking finances weekly, and I need to have family finance meetings with my children. So there are some examples. And what I want to do now is kind of wrap it up. Hopefully you heard me a couple times referring to texting someone and creating an accountability partner. So the best way to use this sheet is to have someone that you check in with once a month. So I asked you to set aside some time in the next 24 hours. I briefly mentioned the uh, calendar year. Those 90-day start and stops, this time around, is going to be 67 days because we're 24 days into January, and it's just a better ritual to think about your goals on the calendar quarter and the annual year so you don't wonder what month you need to look at this thing again and when your deadlines are for your start and stops. Your deadline's April 1st for the bottom of today's sheet. On April 1st, it's time to revamp this and come up with new start and stops. You should set your calendar now for April 1st, May, June, July, is that right? April, May, June, July 1st, September, October 1st, and January 1st. March, April, sorry, April, July, October, and January, every quarter to reset that bottom part of that page. Every year, when everyone's making their yearly resolutions, you're revamping your yearly goals and your long-term goals. What we find is it takes about six months to get this goal sheet fully taken care of, and it takes about six months to really iron in the top half of the page. And once you've reviewed it a couple times, and by, by take six months, maybe you're reviewing it three times in six months, you'll have the top half pretty much set in. We also find that if you have a monthly meeting for an hour with a buddy, and that should be someone in your forum if, if possible, uh, you're much more likely to achieve your goals, and we've had great success through the buddies. So I'd like you to text your buddy and, and, and suggest some times. I'd like you to set your calendar for April, July, October, and January to review your goals. Um, you should probably set up a month's worth of meetings. Uh, I can help you if you need help bringing this tool to your forum. I know many of you in, in Injected and, I'm sorry, in Insignia Quantum Leap have used it. If you're interested in Insignia and Quantum Leap, there's the address to email Patty about membership and qualifications. If you need anything from me, uh, there's my email as well and my favorite quote. And I thank you for making the time today to spend with us on this tool. And I look forward to seeing those of you that are uh, Insignia and Quantum Leap members at our campus in Park City in a couple weeks. Thank you very much. I'll pass it over to Joy. Thank you, Matt. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, again, reminder, if you guys have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the Q&A tab. Uh, Matt, the first question, are you making your goals smart and armed too? I make most of my goals smart and armed. Uh, honestly, in the beginning, I just wanted to get something down. Um, but, I, you know, they're all timely because they're 90 days or one year. Um, some of them are make more sense to me than they do to other people, and I think you need to make sure that, one, you're in control of your goals. You can't set a goal to make sure your wife figures her stuff out or your kids quit being idiots. You can make a goal to be the best supportive husband that you can be and the best supportive father you can be. So focus on what you control and what you have the power over. And, yeah, they should be smart and armed, and, I, and if you don't know what that means, you can email me and we'll talk about that. Okay, um, question about the relationships. I have a hard time coming up with long-term goals in the relationship. Any insight? Yeah, so um, if you're married and you have a family, it's, it's a little bit easier. Uh, if you have a relationship with your parents, you can think about that. Um, your friends, your forum. So the goals might be to just identify who the reciprocating relationships are. That's what Keith Ferrazzi talks about with his 250 it might be to start spending time differently than you do. Um, you might start setting some rituals around family dinners or calling your mom every Sunday. Um, so in my case, my goals revolve around having retreats with my children one-on-one, -on -one, my wife one-on-one, -on -one, my parents one-on-one, -on -one, contacting my friends on a regular basis, having quality time with my friends. One example is I like to visit each of my forum mates 
in their hometown once a year. I don't always hit it, but at least I try. So there's some ideas around relationships, and you can email me if you'd like to talk more. Okay. Uh, the next question I have is are about rituals. Are rituals a goal, or do they create other goals? Rituals are ambiguous. They can be a goal, and they can create other achievements. So I want to have a lifelong ritual of working out every day. I want to have a lifelong ritual of having a retreat with my wife twice a year. I want a lifelong ritual of family retreats. When my kids are 40, I want to take them on family retreats. I want to have a lifelong goal of fam a ritual of family dinners. So I have a goal to have a ritual. And, at the, and, and as well, I have a ritual of starting to work out more, starting to eat better, starting to watch my food and chart my food that will lead to an achievement of not being so fat. Thank you for that one. Another one, Joy? Um, at this moment, we are good with all the questions. Um, all right. And so thank you, Matt, for um, sharing your information with everyone and your experience. And everyone, if you could also fill out the uh, polling slide um, when you have a moment, just two seconds to do so. Thank you for your feedback. So we're done, Joy, then, right? Correct. We are done. Thank you, guys. And a recording will go out um, by tomorrow, the latest to everyone, in addition to the four videos that we weren't able to show today. Thank you very much.